32L plug again uh, for anyone that's joining us midstream between yeah, games. Go for it. All right, so for anyone that is just joining us uh, right now and you're not aware of what RD2L is, RD2L is a player draft league where basically anyone can come and play either as a player or a captain. Um, everyone is free to join and we play an eight week BO2 group stage followed by anywhere from I believe four or five week um, playoff stage. And it's fun. It's a fun place to come meet some friends, get a, you know, a semi-competitive environment to, you know, maybe hone your skills, meet some like-minded players. Maybe, like I said, maybe just join some friends and, you know, have a little click of people to play with that you want to play Dota with. But it's, it's a fun, you know, it's a fun way to get into that sort of competitive environment where you have, you have a captain, you have a drafts, you have set games. We, we play set games or games on set days. So we have EST Sunday, EST Monday, PST Sunday. And every every week it's going to be the same day, same time. So it's super easy to schedule around. It's not super serious. You're not going to have, you know, massive time committal. Maybe just make time for one, maybe two scrims a week and then your actual match. And like I said, it's just a good way to get into something a little bit above your, your average pub experience, essentially. And if you want to learn more about the league, you can go to rd2l.gg or go to the subreddit, Reddit Dota 2 League. Come join the discount, uh, Discord, hang out, talk to some people, see if it's a good fit. Uh, we could always use more captains as well so that everyone gets a chance to play. And this season, we're trying out five-man teams. So it's going to be a little bit more serious, I think, and a little bit more fun. Cool. Oh, it looks like we do have our game now. Yeah, uh, there's and there's uh, something I would just add is it's it's very different playing captains mode versus playing pub games. In pub games, it's very casual. It's very mm -hmm. chaotic. People pick whatever. But when you start trying harder and trying to be organized, it's like the the stress level kind of changes. But in, in a, kind of an interesting and a good way because it kind of throws you off balance a little bit um, because you have you are you're more accountable to your teammates basically. So it's a kind of interesting and. Uh, Definitely very fun to create a team environment with people. So I recommend yeah. it. I think it's fun. Yeah, I think I think it's cool just because it's something you don't usually get. You know, like, like you know, most people play Dota, they're they're just playing pubs. I think ninety nine percent of the time, rarely, you know, there's some leagues out there, but you know, rarely do people get you know, can get five people together that wanna make a team and wanna try and scrim, especially if you're not a really high MMR, it can be difficult to, you know, what if you're three K, you're gonna get a team of three Ks and you know, maybe play, try to find another team of three Ks to, to scrim against so that it's even. But in this, you know, the, the MMR spread across the teams, the way the draft works, it tends to be pretty even for the average MMR between the teams. And, it, you know, it makes for, like you said, it's it's just a very different environment and something that most people otherwise wouldn't be able to have. All right. Are you, I think you're still screen sharing with me. Yep. I'm just going to leave it on that way. You always know what the okay. broadcast is i guess because it doesn't matter that much here but it's okay i'll i just i'll just turn it on no big deal um All right, as long as it doesn't lag you i don't think so it's it should be fine um i can take an, i can keep an eye on the fps once we're in game but i got a beast over here so shout out to <laughs> predator oh hell yeah um uh the jakiro opening very similar as last game except we have mm. uh flipped teams correct um yes last time was poon stars on top so Jakiro will be the uh, the opening here. Shadow Demon as an instant rebuttal is bizarre to me. It's very uh, like, like it's I like Poonan the hero, hero but I think. okay, uh, a support I'm guessing. I think it's a Punani hero. Actually, he I mean I think they play four or five interchangeably. Um, so yeah, I'm almost positive that's a Punani hero. It's just a uh, an interesting opening. You know, it's like one of those heroes. Like Shadow Demon is by all means an okay hero, um, but it's definitely a hero that I would not open with in the first phase because there are things that counter you and there mm. are things that you can counter really well. So, um, I mean, I guess you got to pick a support at some point and it's probably safer to open with like a Shadow Demon than pick like, like one issue with him, lack of disable, obviously, um, no stunts. So if you pick some other non-stunning support hero first and then SD later, I guess you run into stun problems, whereas you can help guarantee that by picking him first, that you don't run into that problem by picking him first. Maybe maybe that's what they're thinking, or they're just comfort, comfortable. Either way works. Yeah, Oracle got through, which I'm a little surprised they didn't pick it. I think that's one of the better supports. Maybe, you know, it's like, like a comfort thing. Um, but again, the Slardar banned out. Both teams love this hero. And the one thing I was gonna mention, I'm, I'm a big Shadow Demon fan. I think he's really good against meta carries. Uh, the Ursa, Lifestealer, Juggernaut. 
Uh, I like the BKB piercing ultimate. Of course, the lack of reliable stun can be, like you mentioned, a little bit rough. And, you know, maybe as an opener, it's not the strongest. But I think it'll be okay. I mean, they just picked an Ursa into it, which shouldn't be the hardest hero to control. It, it shouldn't be terrible, but it's not going to be fun either. I guess the the, the ultimate dispel is really nice because Ursa won't have mm. Fury Swipes. So no matter what, his attack speed is going to be super normal um, compared to another hero. So that part's pretty nice. Um, you also can't rage off the slow. That's true. Yep. But you can stop the damage you take. But that's not really that big of a deal for SD because it's more like buying time anyways. Yeah, um, exactly. A, a little bit of a weird opening, but I think it'll be fine. Um, I, I guess I kind of like sometimes that because I, I recognize that like um, with with weird MMR spreads or even like not at the highest levels of execution, um, it's not as important necessarily what the meta is because it more comes down to like how how much you variate and how well you play basically. So I think it's okay to open with like weird stuff sometimes that throws your opponents off as long as um, as long as your team likes playing it and your team knows how to play around it well. Um, like I said, Punani is known as one of the best drafters in the league, so this doesn't even surprise me. I mean, last season we were casting, we it was a skaters team, and they were another wild card drafting team. Sometimes you just cannot predict what people are going to do in RE2L. Like I said, it's a lot less static, I think, than, than the pro meta, since a lot of it comes down to comfort picks and just the style you develop throughout the season. So, you know, it's not always super easy to predict what people are going to do. The... Uh... Night Stalker is definitely a hero that I'm a little unsure about. Um, it's uh, sometimes picked in the pro scene, but definitely has some issues. It's He's pretty much worthless during the daytime. That part sucks, for sure. They do have a little bit of control here now with this Earthshaker pick, though. Mentioning a lack of reliable disables. And you've got, you've got a whole bunch of hero. I just turned off the video and it lagged you again. But it's probably fine now. I'm just having like... Oh, is it okay now? I think so. Um, it's just like some small FPS drops on XSplit, I think, is what's going on. That's probably fine. Okay. Um, anyways, uh, I'm sorry, what were you saying about Earthshaker? No, you were mentioning, you know, the Shadow Demon doesn't provide any good lockdown. Essentially, you have that mm -hmm. slow from the ultimate, but nothing major. Um, and now they've got the Earthshaker, which is a whole lot of disable, you know, wrapped up in one easy package. So I'm a little unsure about it being picked against an Ursa though, because Yeah, the lanes gonna suck. Yeah, because usually it's gonna be like a four, right? And it's not gonna be like, yeah, you can fissure Ursa when he runs at you, but all he has to do is run at you all the time or like semi often, and then it's harder to catch. Um clock is gonna be another Earthshaker solution here. Mm -hmm. If you can get on top of Earthshaker, it's uh, pretty easy to win those trades or at least to prevent him from casting spells so that part can work. I'm, I'm hoping we get we get a better game here this time around out of Ultra Gunner. You know, from what I've seen and also the information I've been provided um, before the game, it seems that usually their supports are their their you know the, the all stars of the team. They make good plays. They they really help their carries. I know that Ultra is like one of the you know flashier players. Like I said, uh, from what I've seen, Og play usually he plays way better than what we saw. Gotcha. on that legion commander so i think that last game was was really uncharacteristic for them they they have more of an aggressive play style they're, they're usually an aggressive team i don't know if you know like the legion commander was was really what they needed maybe it would have worked out but the timings were just not there yeah it definitely was an issue it was like the the legion timing in the medusa mid so maybe it'll be very different this game um I think the Ursa looks potentially very good. I think the Clockwork could potentially be good too. I, th I like the Veno pick though, I must say, because yeah. it gives them um, kind of like area control. It gives them a ton of slows, which is really effective against Ursa as a whole. And also a lot of damage output too that they were definitely missing prior to this. Do um, you think we're going to see a lane swap here because you maybe you want to play the Veno into the Ursa? Uh, no, I don't think that's good either, yeah. probably. I mean, because uh, the, the issue is Venno is like 285 movement speed or something. Mm -hmm. Ursa's yeah. like, what? Yeah, that's true. Ursa's 320 Ursa's or something. He's yeah. really quick, so I feel like Venno would just be chased down constantly. Like, yeah, you could like poison attack him, but at some point you're going to get caught and Ursa's going to kill you, I feel like. Uh, maybe maybe it works if it's like Venno or Shaker. Maybe, but probably not because Jakira would just zone Urshaker and then Ursa gets the fast boots and then you're just going to be out of your lane. So, um,. Something else sure. I wanted to point out. I, I'm a little... So, the Troll Warlord is a good hero, but I feel like it wasn't you know, really their problem. I was going to mention, we talked about how the Sven ban was a little bit weird last time. Oh, yep. I love this hero. <laughs> this hero is super good, but I, there's a lot of kiting potential yeah. on this Dire that he's going to have to deal with. He's, he kind of has the same exact issue as Ursa, and they already kind of have a way to deal with 
Ursa, I guess, with this, yeah. this Venno, a Shadow Demon, Earth Shaker, and Wraith King's not going to solve that. But anyways, we were talking about how the Sven was a bit of a weird ban, and I definitely think they should have utilized their last three bans just completely to try to force Dark their, you know, the, the Poon Stars mid player into a, a bad position. Is this going to be another Medusa? Okay, no. But yeah, this time the, this, you know, this Trolls band, and currently they still have Ember Spirit available for Dark, which is one of his favorite heroes. And I think if last game they should, they would have just focused and took, taken out the Queen of Pain, the Ember, and the Lena, and maybe forced him into, a, you know, more unconventional or a bit of less of a you know safety pick for him it might have been different i don't think the sven was worth the ban at all yeah probably wasn't last game um what do you make of the death prophet here i'm, I'm personally a little unsure like silence is really good this game but um and it, it is a ranged core like they basically have a run at you lineup right uh the radiant team that seems very clear but i'm not sure if death prophet fits super well i feel like she's going to be able to be just picked off from range kind of with uh, like veno and shadow demon it's a it's an ultra gunner comfort pick. Okay. Yeah, it's a, he. I think he really really likes this hero, and they may just be fine. You know, second to last picking it. Uh, it's okay. I think here it's not the worst. We'll see really how it matches up. Yeah, and uh, make sure that he doesn't get out lane mid because Death Prophet has trouble with that sometimes. Depending on what the matchup is, her animation is really slow. Her base mm -hmm. damage is just okay, and even Crypt Swarm level one is only like seventy five damage, so it kind of can be iffy. I wonder if we'll see Dark play something like, I don't know if it'd be the best hero, but maybe something like a Shadow Fiend, just because I know that that's a, that's a big Ultra Gunner hero, and maybe he just feels like playing it. Nope, it's going to be that Ember. Like yeah. I said, one of his favorite heroes, it's in the pool. Ember Why looks not? way better. Um, I mean, they, he'll have to deal with Silence from Death Prophet, but against like Ursa, Clockwork, Wraith King, those disables are kind of straightforward to dodge or to escape from so i think ember makes a lot more sense here especially because the enemy team is running you lineup um you they basically are going to run at you until they realize they're taking too much damage and they're going to run and ember is perfect for that moment he can catch up and keep them locked down so I, I definitely like the ember pick here i don't know if it works well against death prophet in lane it'll i think it'll it might be, be okay maybe it'll be rough trading just because you are playing melee and arranged i th think dark has played enough ember that he generally should know how to you know lane against almost any matchup and like you said the only real threat i see from the radiant to this ember spirit is like a hook shot into silence everything else is too easy to disjoint yeah yeah he should be fine or like a, a yules and ice path yeah Death prophet could go yules or or uh well, they, Atos. Could, they could go for like a double Atos here I, I don't really know what kind of timing we'll see for a potential Atos out of like a jakiro but maybe death prophet Atos. i don't think yeah. is you know out of the ordinary and definitely i think a fine item on the hero so that would be another way to you know potentially lock him down long enough to, to silence but in the same vein Atos or um veil or blah, yules is not very great defensive it can be a little bit uh lack some things so I'm not sure if that's mm. the solution either i'm very curious to see to how the lanes match up though i think that's going to be the big difference maker um ember spirit going mid obviously against the death prophet that one was pretty easy and then it's going to be a Wraith King Clockwork going top and an Ursa safe lane actually with the Jakiro. So it'll be Ursa against Night Stalker. Night Stalker, I would abandon right now if I was him. This doesn't <laughs> look very fun. Your nuke does. Yeah, this, this is a pretty awful lane, but. 45 damage. Really like 45 damage, man. Like. That's rough. That's just rough. Good luck. Yeah, this is. I don't know. I mean. I think this game, it, I think it looks a little bit better here for Ultra's team than last time. I The Medusa just ended up not working out at all. I think I have a little bit more faith in his his Death Prophet just because I know it's a big comfort hero. So I'm definitely expecting a better game out of the Radiant. Uh, I something, think, no, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to mention the the player swaps that we have. So the okay. Radiant now, you see, you see Blackout now uh, here on the Radiant. And on the flip side, we have JMLV now on the on the shadow demon so we have had our sixth players swap in now and blackout won last season of rd12 so if you can okay. they can pull out a win here they'll win back-to-back -back seasons see if they can do it um boots on the earth shaker potentially gonna fissure block these guys now nah, they're scared never mind night stalker is not afraid <laughs> He's, he's a pretty durable hero, but he's still going to take a couple of those Fury Swipes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I guess maybe a weird A-click there. He Or 
he didn't a-click, I guess, properly. He just kind of stopped at the high ground. Yeah, and that's uh, three bounty runs for the Dire team, actually, for them. Um, oh, I was too generous to the Venom, by the way. He's 275 movement speed. That's even worse. Hero's got garbage movement speed. But, hey, he's, uh, got, he's got 279. That's with his agility. Though. With his agility, so yeah. His base is 275. It's terrible. He's, he's a little a little bit faster than that 275. Still basically just crawling mm -hmm. at level 1. Uh, Clockwork going for a boot start into Power Cogs. So just going yeah, to try to get... Block. Pull the creep wave into a favorable position. I don't think that really matters too much, though, because it's not like I'm not too worried about them chasing you down. I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's fine. Um, Ember off to a good start. Got four last hits versus Death Prophets two. I think bottom lane is the one that's going to be really rough for the Dire. You're playing two melee heroes into an Ursa and a Jakiro. Yeah, that's pretty awful. I don't even know what they do there. Actually, what, what needs to happen probably is Earthshaker needs to bounce between this lane and mid. Although if he does that, the Night Stalker is really screwed, so yeah, then, I don't know. Then you're really throwing your Night Stalker to the wolves. It's like, here, do nothing. Oh. JMLV might die for this, though, but first blood, definitely worth getting. Okay. I think Venno took quite a bit of damage there, too, though. Oh, yeah, he did, actually. He's got a salve, though. He'll be okay. And the salve will be in our... No, What? Wraith King! Come on! <laughs> it's a perfectly good salve interrupt. Hey, not worth it in his mind, not worth it. Guess not. He's very, very planning ahead here. He's gonna go straight for the the uh, um, phase boots into the Midas, into the Radiance. Good luck, man. Small camp ruining uh, Clockwork's plays here. Yeah, I think Clock's gonna kind die. Of, maybe. Yeah, interesting move there. Walking very close. Alk, uh, this Venno just gonna cut the trees. I don't know if they're gonna be able to kill him. That last hit will do it. If only he TP'd right away, he would have been fine. Yeah, he would have. They have absolutely no way to cancel that with the level one poison. Level one poison is very underwhelming too. Uh, it's 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 a little weak. Get a lot it's, of stacks. It's thirty. Oh, you mean shadow poison? I thought you meant poison sting. Yeah, no, level no, one poison. Shadow poisons. poison. Yeah, shadow poison doesn't. Yeah. You know, even if he sat there and let him stack like two on him, it wouldn't have done anything if he just TP'd in his face. Yeah, it's not incredible damage for sure, the the level one. And it takes so much mana to, uh, to yeah. get it, but <laughs> six, it's... Six stacks or something, five, six, and then five. And you're it, talking. Yeah. It's not as bad as it used to be, because it's 35 at level one now, but... Well, still doable. Um, interesting ward placement for him. A really weird ward. Oh, is, this, is this a fresh ward? Interesting. Yeah, he just placed that. I, I don't know, man. So he has caught our boy Shadow Demon over here with the... Walking him down with the battery assault and power cogs. Shouldn't be able to complete the kill unless... Okay, Shadow Demon turns around. Trying to juke through the trees will probably live. Yeah. Chow Mains, though, I just noticed he's been... He's getting walked down here. He's Level dead. 2 into Poison Sting and a Gale. Is he going to survive? Does have the Tango going. It runs out! Oh, oh, oh. 10 HP. Where's that tick? I thought it was going to tick one more time, but it ran no, out. That was, I guess that was the last one. Yeah, I, th I expected him to die there. Yeah, he looked super dead. Extremely it's not dead. Great getting zoned out of lane though. Yeah, I I really feel like he should be owning a lot more than this against like a Venno Shadow Demon lane. Like the fact that he got first split was a big mistake. Um, I mean he went to lane with like what two Ironwood branches, but he's got so much movement speed over these guys. Like they should have just been like with Clockwork having boots and him having uh, just being Wraith King three eighteen movement speed. He should just ran up to lane and they should just ran at people. But yeah, maybe he, he didn't just, want to do that because of cogs. Into, you know, fire blast into assault and cogs, and I think you you definitely guarantee a kill on either of these heroes. I mean, what's Venno gonna do? Like you said, he's walking around with basically no move speed. I mean, he didn't have um, battery assault level one because he went cogs, but I, I think they true. they definitely should have fought a little bit, uh, a little bit more because I think the uh, the Wraith King is gonna have disappointing farm as a result, or at least he should be dominating this lane. They should just be running the Venno down, in my opinion. And uh, turning that into items. Ultra Gunner doing much better in this lane than last game. He's basically even here with Dark in this mid lane. The DP versus the e, uh, BS. Keeping that's up in levels too this time. Yeah, that's pretty big actually. Uh, if, like, again, Ember probably could have gotten a kill. If, um, yeah. Or shake Top it lane, run, it Looks like SD may be dead. Last hit there from Chow Mains will finish him off. Do you see those so battery salts? They were all hitting him, not the illusion. Like every single one. It was like four in a row. That was crazy. How to tell Gaben doesn't love you. Exactly. Uh, Bounty runes get picked up here. Stun gets thrown. Wraith King running for the running for the hills. 
Oh, he better he's not get the creeps session. to go with him, though. She does have the, the Quelling Blade. Should be able to hopefully secure all of these uncontested. He should start should walking him back to his thing. tower now. Guess they can just kill the wave themselves. No big deal. How are these position ones doing when they compare? Looks like they're pretty even. Both mid lane and safe lane carries or cores doing, doing pretty well. I am so surprised that Night Stalker has 19 last hits. <laughs> How is this possible? No, well, so it's nighttime now, so it only gets easier. I mean, that, that, this should not be the case, right? Like, Ursa should have been able to abuse the hell out of Night Stalker in the leaning stage. I don't... Like, how do they even harass the guy? I'm I think very it's a confused. little late on this pull, unfortunately. I think the Ursa's just been playing a little too scared, if I had to guess, and not abusing his um, Fury Swipe trade potential, and now it's nighttime, so now it's basically... I think both... both uh... Safe and offlane haven't been playing aggressive enough here for the Radiant, you'd say? Yeah, Bo both offlanes actually. Uh, both offlane pairs. Or I'm sorry, you're right, safe and offlane, yeah, same team actually. They were the, the, I thought their lineups looked a little bit better, but I, based on this, um, I don't know, we'll see, it might turn around later, but for now it's not looking fantastic. And what do you think uh, this Night Stalker, do you think this Night Stalker should stay down here, or should he rotate now that he has a point to the Crippling Fear and it's nighttime? Um, I mean, that's a five second night duration. Yeah, with this many last hits, he's fine, he can actually stick around, I think. Oh. Ultra Gunner, he's getting gone on here in the mid lane. Oh, unfortunately, Illidan completely misjudges the Fisher placement, and I think Ultra Gunner will be okay. It looks like they're still in hot pursuit. They have a DD on the Ember, still have one Fire Remnant. Blackout has arrived. He throws the Fire Remnant, and they do they do pick up the kill, and looks like Blackout may go down as well on this Jakiro. One more hit will do it, and that's pretty much worst case scenario right there. Double kill for the enemy mid laner. Oh yeah, really good run down there. Well, uh, and that cost uh, Night Stalker almost no time, just an easy rotate over. Mm -hmm. um, he's going to have Phase Boots now ready to pick up. So at this point, it's not looking great for Ursa. Like, Ursa, again, is still going to trade well, but normally um, Ursa applies this, like, lane pressure advantage where, like, you just can't, you just get trade zoned out of the lane, basically, and you just can't, um, you can't get farm anymore. And it becomes that Legion commander from last game where they just sit in the jungle and hit creeps, so... It's kind of looking like that's going to be the case again for the Radiant team, at least uh, except for in the mid lane. The mid lane's going well. Which is I mean, I, I definitely think they, they have kill potential on this Venomancer. You know, he's got three points into uh, this Mortal Strike, so he's got a ton of skeletons. Plus or some might die bottom. Oh. They are I'm running dead. Hog down. He has four Shadow Poison stacks on him. We'll pop it. Gets the kill. Hmm. Too many circles. Just needed to run in a straight direction, maybe. Alright, gonna be pressuring the uh, the Veno here. He might just die to these skeletons. Oh, he gailed them all though, so they're yeah, the, the skeletons manageable. Do so much damage. Yeah, they're actually so good. But you gotta get maybe, last hits to abuse them. I, I think, like you said, maybe they're just they're scared here on on both of these cores, the Ursa and the Wraith King. Maybe mm -hmm. once once he hits six, I'm sure he'll he'll get the courage to just man up on somebody. So they have used an ultimate here from the Night Stalker. They're trying to run down this Jakiro. The Ice Path does connect on the ES. It doesn't look like it's going to be able to save his life. And Ursa actually gets caught by the Disruption. Is going to be able to use those Phase Boots and phase through the Illusions. Clockwork making the rotation. They both get caught. They use the Crippling Fear. And now a rotation from the Ember Spirit. Going to catch them both in the Searing Chains. And it looks like all going to die twice in very quick succession on the Ursa. It's a rough one. Uh, the Death Prophet teleported mid... Uh a little bit before that fight started, or at least during it. Um, she's going to be able to use her ulti, but... They've got a glyph, though, so they can slow this down. We'll see if they do. So they rotated so far. Yeah, it doesn't look like they're going to be able to defend mid very well. They, well, this is this is the biggest mistake the Dire team has made so far, for sure. Yeah, letting this, this new tower go down early. They do use the fort now, but I think that tower's dead anyways. Like, I, I don't know. I would have committed to that one, I... Just go in melee range, pick it off. All right, they got it. That's uh, that's that's a pretty big loss. It's gonna offset some of the gold advantage. Uh, maybe it won't matter because the 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 radiant safe lane is still going down. But hmm. it's gonna be daytime soon, so that'll be a good time to play around this night stalker. Night stalker doing well though. He's got his he's got himself a medallion of courage now, based completely uh, completed, and just needs to get it off the uh, all out of his stash. It's a good early pickup. It'll be really effective against a lot of the Radiant heroes because their armor is low. Especially against heroes like Wraith King, things like Medallion are amazing because it just uh, lowers the amount of health that you get out of your two ults. 
Yeah, I'm not sure if this uh, Dark's... Oh, Shadow Demon, he's able to get both runes before going down, so he trades his life, but gets both bounty runes. I definitely think you trade your life as a 5 for that. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's like, what, 400 gold for the whole team or something? For the whole team, yeah. It's a, it's a big gold yeah, advantage. Oh, it's maybe the first move on the Night Stalker that will result in a kill. Getting trapped in those cogs, the ice path. It's for it's a zoning ice path. It doesn't connect, <laughs> but it does keep him from running that way. You better not think about leaving yeah. those cogs. Probably not easy for a Night Stalker to break cogs at daytime with battery salt going on. Yeah. Interesting Venno build so far. Treads, Wraith Band, he is going to go for uh, the Spirit Vessel Rush to try to be able to get kills. It's actually pretty good to have against um, Death Prophet because you can stop her from getting as much heal from Spirit Siphon. But with that said, there's not really a lot of super tanky strength heroes that would give her a lot of heal. So I'm not super sold necessarily on that build rush. What do you think? What would you prefer on this Venno? Um, I mean, it's, it's really common to go Spirit Vessel, but I, I'm kind of a big fan of going Veil builds um yeah just because Especially they're increasing you have like an ember on your team too yeah that's a really good point you have an ember you have a shadow demon um you have an earth shaker everybody's doing magic damage i think buying a veil on one hero is completely reasonable and it's uh gives you lots of mana gives you like what 12 int or something like that it's it's kind of like the uh, it's it's like another alternate to something like atos there's a big rotation in this bottom lane from the dire they catch the clockwork out the ice path it's just going to delay his death for a couple of seconds they bring him down a dominating streak now for the ember spirit and they're gonna chase blackout under this tower they don't have the void it doesn't matter is just gonna deny him his tp they need to kill this Venno, and it looks like they're going to start it in the top lane. They start there with the stun from the Wraith, and they do bring him down. They commit the Rage and Rage, so they do trade something. Mm -hmm. um, Death Prophet going to be going for an Atos here, which is completely reasonable. Item. Yep, very good. Tons of stats. Gives them more disable against the Ember. If you land the Atos, you can drop the Silence afterwards. Now turning Exorcism into another tower kill, most likely. Shadow Demon trying to wrap around, uh, putting a ward down though. So you were mentioning earlier about all the magical damage that this Dire team has. Do you think that mm -hmm. could be an issue? The fact that they essentially, outside of Sleight of Fist, don't really have any physical damage dealers on their team? You know, maybe when BKVs come out for the Radiant, if it gets to that point? Um, it can be an issue sometimes, yes. Um, but I don't think it's going to be... Like, it's going to definitely hurt when like BKVs get popped, by all means. Um... But it's uh, outside of BKBs. It's not like a lot of them are going to be buying hoods or anything like that. So I think mm -hmm. it's I think it's okay. And either way, like Veil by itself is still a really effective stat item on your hero. No matter what happens, you'll always have that aspect of it. Um, Venno trying to uh, imitate Death Prof a little bit here with the the pushing mid. The Plague wards are not quite the same. Oh, he might actually have overextended on that move. He uses the Nova and now Ember Spirit walks in and rage is used by the ursa gonna be negating a lot of that damage but now he might be in a bit of trouble slide of fist comes out doesn't look like they're gonna push that any further and mid should be successfully defended here for the radiant as i say that our boy sharingan getting caught a nice two-man cog though uses the hook shot they're gonna be able to bring down this night stalker and i think that this may be a dead clockwork to all those dots it looks like chow mains has showed up uses the Wraithfire Blast on the Venomancer. Venomancer is saved temporarily there and might actually just be saved by the Ember Spirit using that Sleight of Fist and Searing Chains. They pop a drum as well. I think they lost, you know, they did lose the Shadow Demon. The drums were really useful on both sides there, actually. Yeah. Um, not a big fan of the Midas Rush on Wraith King offlane. I don't think this is very safe. I, I would have liked him to grab maybe even like a Bracer or something. Like just, just buy some stats and go run at them and, and attack and, and cast spells. I think that's more useful personally. Oh, uh, I, I don't know if you noticed, but I wanted to point out that Clockwork actually got denied by oh, Jakiro. Nice. So that's that great. was a, essentially a zero for two trade favoring okay. the Radiant. It looked good. Uh, at first I thought it was terrible. I was like, oh, Clock just put himself in a terrible <laughs> position. But that's kind of what you're supposed to do as Clock, right? Like, make people think that you're vulnerable, then you pull them into an out-of-position spot. Um, yeah, very nice cogs there. Yeah, it was good. He's uh, almost level 7. He's doing fine. Death Prophet rotating back top again. She did end up going back for the drum before working okay. on the Atos. Pretty tanky hero now. Well, I mean, at least he's got a lot of HP. He's got mm -hmm. 1,600 HP. It's a little overkill on drums. Is Do they have 3 or just 2? I think it's uh, just the Just, just the 2, I guess. 
Could be worse. Um, I think this is also one of those moments on Ursa where you want to pick up a um, an extra Windlace. So if you go Drum and Windlace, your hero is stupidly fast, especially with phase boots. Where hook was that mid, hook shot? It mid. looks like we did have a successful hook shot. It's going to catch the ES in the mid lane, but Good Night luck. Stalker is here, has used the Dark Ascension. They're going to try to walk down this clockwork, the Fissure. It's going to make sure that they're able to pick up the kill. They use the Echo, the immediate enrage. Defensive disruption used here by the Shadow Demon, and now we have a full on fight breaking out in the mid lane, but the Macro Pyre completely zoning the Dire team from being able to go up that high ground. Now it has worn off, and they do have three Fire Remnants, so they could try to play a bit aggressively here. It's not nighttime, though, and Darkness is going to wear off. Or is it nighttime? Oh, it is, actually. Okay. For I quite a long time, too. To play this. Yeah, they, I just know. I thought it was going to be daytime after that ended, but they have a lot of nighttime left to play with. A little damage to the Wraith King. This would be a great pick off if they can get him, but... He's got a 20 stick. Pops his wand to stay alive here. They're just trying to siege slowly. This is definitely one of the biggest weaknesses of the dire lineup. They just don't have tower hitters. Mm -hmm. They do have hook shot up soon, though. I think they might just be delaying this until Clockwork gets that hook shot off cooldown, which it is now. So it would be pretty dangerous for the the dire to go. They don't have Echo Slam either, and there we go. They That's have the crazy. Hook shot. Doesn't look like there's going to be any follow up. Dark. It's freaking crazy. And they get that reincarnation popped. Macropire is down as well, but it looks like Sharingan may be toast. Dark with that last. Fire Remnant is able to get him the nice defensive disrupt. disruption going to save the Ember Spirit for now. He turns around, gets a double kill with a sleight of fist. They bring down the carry of the Radiant team. And now Channel Main's getting walked down. Doesn't have that reincarnation available. A triple kill for Dark. That Arcane Rune coming in clutch there. That was a nice time to have Arcane. But either way, that was a garbage initiation. Like, he effectively used his skills, but it was not a good time. They cannot yeah. fight into this. Do you see how many Plague Wards there were? There was Plague Wards every, like, four <laughs> inches. So even if you hookshot in, how are they supposed to follow that up? Macro power was like the best thing you have going for you there, but if you don't have like exorcism, which they didn't, they have no overwhelming damage to be able to follow that up. And the whole time, everybody's being slowed and taking poison damage. So, just a bad choice to fight there. the The best thing they could probably do is like macro power the creep wave, dual breath creep wave, crypt swarm the creep wave to prevent them from going high ground and hopefully like deal with the plague ward slowly. But maybe they should have yeah, spent slow pushing. I mean, with that many plague wards and all those slows against an Ursa and a Wraith King, so. Yep. Maybe two of the worst heroes to walk into that kind of situation. Exactly. And especially because Wraith King's not ready to fight. Like, he's got Midas, so he's leveling okay, but it's going to be a while until he gets Radiance. And Radiance is basically what he needs to be able to impact the fight while being slow. Yeah, not to mention that that level 1 reincarnation is such a pain in the ass to play with. It's 200 yeah. second cooldown. It's so bad. Well, it looks like they have, they have spotted this... This Earthshaker, he's going to TP out. They do have the Eidos, but they need to get vision of him. And he's going to TP out right before wow. the Eidos. The Eidos was actually in midair. That That's crazy. Right that is insane. He was so close to him, too. I can't believe that didn't connect. Yeah, the Eidos is a fast projectile, too. It's uh, very surprising that he... Yeah, and in the bottom jungle here for the Radiant, you're not even safe in your own jungle as Big Og goes down on the Ursa. They have this dire, this dire ward. They know, I mean, look at the, the jungle coverage here. It is good. Very easy to gank Ursa's down there. And he's not really going to be helping himself out very much um, by jungling. This is a uh, same player, same problem, actually. Where he wants to get this teamfight item, but he's hitting neutral camps to do it. And it's, I think, just a misunderstanding of um, how the hero is supposed to be played. Um, both him and uh, both Ursa and the Legion. You need to win your lane, and then you basically just can dominate the lane, which forces them into the jungle, which gives you an advantage. You know, they have used the Dark Ascension here, so it looks like they're trying to fight. They still have some nighttime after this runs out, too. Uh, does have the Crippling Fear available, hasn't even used it yet. They do get the Medallion off, and it looks like Blackout will be the casualty. Beyond Godlike now for Dark. By the way, he hasn't died once in these two games yet. They do find a kill on Venomancer in the bottom lane, but man, Dark right now is just currently, what was he, 12 kills last game? He's 22 and 0. Yeah, he's doing great right now. They are going to find Chalmain, so 20 seconds on the Reincarnation, they hold them down, they have the Silence as well from the Crippling Fear, and they lose their Wraith King. Not looking good for the Radiant Team, 4k advantage. It's not nearly as bad as the last match, oh, yeah. that's for sure. But um, I think Death Prophet is definitely definitely has to be the hero that wins wins the team fights for them. Um, if she gets Shiva's Guard, she'll be in a much better place. Uh, definitely needs BKB as well, though. Maybe just a Plate Mail into a BKB? She doesn't even really need that much armor, to be honest. The only threat is basically like medallion with sleight of fist, but 
it's not even that much. I think I think she should maybe just get BKB first. I'm yeah, sure. I, I I agree with you. I think the BKB against this lineup looks so much more value than having the Shivas. It's also one of those games too where I look at her magic resistance talent. I'm like, maybe you really should have gotten the magic <laughs> resistance talent. Forty I don't damage know what is a lot, but gonna do. I mean, and, and she has phase boost, so her attack speed is not that high. But it, I mean, forty damage is by all means a lot, but. I don't know, I can't help but look at these like min-max moments where I understand the Death Prophet is a stay alive to let my abilities do damage hero. I almost wouldn't even have minded a hood over this drums, to be entirely honest, with the magic resist mm. talent. I don't know, maybe it would have been overkill yeah, on the magic resist, but... That's that's overkill, I think, because then you're having... You're not as fast. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that don't is have regen. The, yeah, I didn't think about the move speed. Yeah, and the mana regen is pretty nice to have, too. And look at this ward we just got down from JMLV here on the Shadow Demon. Smoked in to get that ward, so the Radiant are going to have no clue that that was just placed. That's, uh, that's, that's what I use my smokes for. Usually I just buy smokes slowly because I don't <laughs> want them to get to three, and then I just have like three uh, smokes in my backpack. I should just once in a while use them to plant wards. That's a very very yeah, good idea. Yeah, ward. High, high level play here out of out of the Shadow Demon. I like it. When your team is bad at coordinating actual smoke ganks, which you know I am usually bad at doing so. That's uh, I'll learn something today. Um, maybe they can get a kill here? No, nope, everybody is long gone here. Yeah, they're gonna know everyone is here because of this ward. They see the DP, they know exactly where the DP is. If this clock shows, he, I mean, he's the one that's gonna be off the map making plays happen. If they did spot him there, that would have been bad as well. Looks like he is gonna go for the Black King bar first. Picks up the Ogre Axe early. Okay, good. So, probably gonna be the snag here. More and Searing Chains. Uh, did he get his Blink Dagger? Is this on, on the Courier, or did he decide... Okay, he does have... The blink dagger does, on the yes. career. I think you know. I was I was talking to people about you see Ursas they get drums and then they get Basher or blink. Yep. You know I I generally think that you know especially in games like this I think the blink is easy. It's easier to turn a blink into a Basher than it is a Basher into a blink if you're not getting kills. That's true. Like with the Basher, like I think you get the Basher and then you can get maybe two three easy pickoffs even if it's on supports. And I, in, in my opinion, it's easier to turn that item. And the pickoffs into the basher. Then, if you get the basher and you don't have any success with it, then you know what are you doing with the item? Yeah, but I think the basher is part of like a cascade of your lane going well, and yeah. you also going like a win lace in addition. So your movement speed is fast enough that um, you can basically have your your basher ready to go at like a abnormally early speed. Yeah, due to lane I, I do like the decision for the blink here, especially. I mean, you can't it's walk fine, yeah. through all those plague wards. Yes. Um, Blink obviously has some trouble there too sometimes, but... Yeah, yeah, definitely. They can make it work, maybe. Um, Darken is such a good position, though, with the Maelstrom. Um, he's got Sacred Relic ready, so almost Radiance ready to go. He's going to get the Radiance before the Wraith King. Yes, and it's going to be way more effective on him. Wraith King is going to be able to finish his, um, his uh, Sacred Relic here, but... Only does so much. I feel like I see him. I don't know if he did it this time because who knows? Maybe some died. But I feel like he's using Mortal Strike a lot when he doesn't have eight zombies up or skellies ready. That's a big, a big downside. Like he, he he's lost, he lost so much advantage that he could have had from Wraith King. Like Wraith King is kind of like a lane winner hero right now. It's like you throw your stuns, you get kills, you spawn zombies or skellies and throw a stun to chase chase the skeletons on somebody, yeah. and then and then they leave the lane, and then you get eight more skeletons and you spawn them and you blow up towers. But we never we, had that. We saw you know? what the mortal strike did to that Veno, and I don't even you know they just walked him down. And yep. so you do have the Eidos used here in the mid lane. And it forces the Dark Ascension, but I don't think they're gonna find a kill off of that. I definitely would have committed to that one. Chow Mains might actually be in a little bit of trouble. They throw the vessel on him, but the blink in from Aug uses the enrage immediately, uses the four staff. It looks like it's pretty good. There's a hook shot into the back line, but I don't think that uh, the clockwork is going to be too successful with that. He goes down. So we did have the Shadow Demon Ultimate committed already, and now they're going to charge forward dark. Full HP now with that Radiance completed. There's no defensive item for this Death Prophet. And it looks like Ultra Hunter will just go down here. A double kill and now a Blink Echo Slam. That is the Blink reveal and a huge wipe for the Radiant. Four down and all they get is a Night Stalker. Yeah, that Echo was the cherry on top of how the team fight was going. Just uh, it, was a, it was a disadvantage in terms of net worth and just a little bit of an execution too. Like the, the hook shot was great. It caught the Earthshaker, but then they also he also found the, uh, the Ember Spirit the back Ember there as well. <laughs> Which just became a you know just a two on one very easy way to kill Clockwork. So, um, 
kind of a good fight, but just they didn't quite fully commit. I think if Death Prophet had committed like Exorcism and uh, Hookshot had came to kill the Night Stalker when they first went on him, it all would have been okay. But it, they felt a little bit unsure about it. And at this point, Venna also has four staff, which is going to keep him alive easily. So it's just a lot of uh, mix of issues that they encountered here. Just yeah, hard they're to going fight. for another four staff too on Shadow Demon. I mean, that's great having these four staffs against the Eidos Death Prophet, the Ursa. It's just really easy survivability against this team. Yeah. And uh, the Ursa's initiation was fine. His uh, damage was okay, but they're not going to have a lot of damage just yet. Like, he needed the blink a lot earlier for, for that damage to be really threatening. And Venomancer doesn't even have, like, that low of armor anyways. 15 plus 7 here. Now they is a mech. So, just going to get harder and harder. What does Radiant have to do differently, or what do they have to do now in order to get this? Oh, it looks like they missed the Void on the Ursa, but... It's not the worst. Gotta make some, out. gotta make some kills happen. Basically, um, that's what they need. See, he did it again. He spawned three skeletons. Come on, man. <laughs> Walk is that mortal strike effectively? It looks like they want to play aggressive. Dark. He's looking for the sleight of fist chains. He's gonna find them. Chow Mains does have that reincarnation, but this is basically going to be a wasted reincarnation. And there are a lot of dire heroes here in position. I don't think you can bail your Wraith King out. They use the vessel as well. Why not? And they bring him down for 50 seconds. No buyback on the on the Wraith King. That's a rough one. It is not looking good. Um, I mean, they, they definitely need pickoffs to, to be effective here. The easiest way is to combo Clockwork with Ursa. You need a Disabler hero with a Damage hero. And the Damage hero is Ursa, the Disabler is Clockwork. Those are the two guys that should be moving around together and looking for pickoffs. But for now, they just need to defend. Yeah, they did get the Tier 1 in the bottom lane, but like you said, they really need to hold this Tier 3. They can't let this go this earlier it's gonna feel like a repeat of last game and looks like they're thinking about lining up the hook shot but thankfully you know did did not decide to pull the trigger went for cast range on death prophet here 175 is actually pretty good I feel like i haven't seen that much death prophet lately at least enough to forget about the, some of the talents um oh, somebody pointed out uh if you could switch to net worth if you haven't already sorry <laughs> Come on, guys. Everybody knows I always do it at the 28 minute mark. It was coming. Yeah. My bet. Um, almost BKB on Ursa. They're taking a rush here. Pop your Shadow Poison. You got six stacks, buddy. All right, they're going to see it. This is, this is tough to, to play against here. You know, always having that vision in the pit with the flare makes both, it pretty difficult. Both teams actually lacking a lot of vision here. Dire team doesn't have much setup. Okay. This is great though. Yeah, they do have the BKB on the Death Prophet if they want to go for it. Pops the BKB, but he was already uh, already slowed there, and he's just gonna. It looks like a wasted BKB and Exorcism. Just fully countered by Shadow Demon Ulti. Really good usage. Oh, now she's just dead. Oh, this is bad. Yeah, she he's still run. taken down from the uh, Poison Nova, and they do have a nice hook shot in. Ursa blinks in as well, but the Cogs actually being a little misplaced there. We have a blink echo. It looks like it connected on three. Three already down here for the Radiant, and it looks like these two lives will go down for Chow Mains as he is just caught here between five dire heroes with absolutely nothing he can do. Yeah, that needed to be uh, Wraith King going in first, ideally, but it's just a little bit too hard. I, I get I get Death Prophet's position a little bit, though. Like, she felt like, I'm using my ultimate, I'm using my BKB, we need to take a fight, but the dire team just did such a good job keeping her separated. The... The Shadow Demon ulti shut down her ability to be aggressive. They're ba they basically needed uh, Hookshot to come the same moment that mm -hmm. she popped BKB. Like, as soon as Death Prophet realized that trouble is hitting, Clock needs to go in and make sure they can't get out. Uh, and that, that was maybe a little bit of a lacking for the rest of their team. Yeah, so. I, th I think Blackout it might... Okay, I, I was worried that Jakiro would have moved up a little too far and got caught with a sleight of fist chains, but Dark doesn't really have that much mana to work with. Nor health, just standing in uh, this macro powerful. There it is, the problem. They can't hit buildings very well. <laughs> Commanding team I mean, fight win and they still can't kill it. No, no racks off of that. Yeah. Uh, at least they can go back and take a rush, I guess. One benefit. Yeah, there's no exorcism for 50. It's BKB is this embers? Yeah. Okay. Ah, that's a big item. I mean, now they were already not really doing a good job of controlling him, even with the Eidos and Hookshot at their disposal with Silence, and now they don't really have any way of controlling him. Yeah, this is a, a solution for Silence, basically. It's the... Uh, the, the most annoying thing that would just be up all the time that he doesn't want to be able to... Like, he doesn't want to get Manta, probably. BKB is just safer. Rocket will scout their position here. 
Can they do anything this time though? I mean, without exorcism, 19 seconds, a lot of wards already on this on this high ground. It's gonna be rough there. Oh, he used the mortal strike again with three skeletons. You just I think he thinks it maxes out of three is all. <laughs> it's I, the only explanation. I, I just I'm also not sure how he doesn't get eight charges, but Oh okay, the steal! Gonna hook shot no. Oh he's not able to steal the ages. Now the poison nova is popped an ice path that only connects on one and this Ursa is in a whole world of trouble. An arcane rune for dark, so this Ember Spirit would be very dangerous. It looks like now they're trying to chase down Ultra Gunner who pops the exorcism. This may be a last ditch effort to salvage something of this fight. He may be able to save himself, but he's definitely not saving that fight. Yeah. Maybe he didn't need to pop ulti, but it's it's hard to say there. It really looked like Ursa was going to be able to take the, the Roche there, but had a little bit of trouble getting on top of it. I Ember think the was, ready. was just a microsecond too late to actually stun the people. In. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe if the if the Roche went down and the hookshot went through and caught Ember, it would have been better, but... Yeah, that might have worked. Unfortunate timing. Goodbye, little ghost banshees. This is now becoming a very, very hard uphill battle for the Radiant. It really is. At least they're all alive. They don't have enough levels to be dead forever. Yeah, that's uh, one of the perks of being underleveled. Absolutely. Wish Shakira had more Ice Path levels. The skill build is very outdated. Yeah, I, I was looking at that, and I, you know, for Liquid Fire, it's not really that useful compared to the extra time you have on the Ice Path. Yeah. If he does this, he needs to go attack range talent. If you max liquid fire first, that's the only way to justify it. Especially against the Venom and stuff and all this extra range. Like they have all these range issues. It would be solved a little bit by attack range bonus. Speaking of Venom, he's got Greaves now, so the sustain now on the Dire, it's it's gonna be there a little bit. There's not really any equivalent item on the on the Radiant. They don't have, you know, that aura builder, the Wraith King going for the, the Radiant's blank. He could have been the aura builder, probably. He, he could have, but you know, with the build he has, it's I, I doubt he's going to transition into something like a crimson or anything like that, which wouldn't really do much anyways. Maybe a pipe would have been yeah. very useful for this team. Maybe on the clockwork. I don't know. I'm not sure what I think he should have bought. Maybe like bracer into Vlad's or something. Nah, I don't think that would have done that much either. I, think, I mean, say. I think this is the only build he could have gone. The problem is. That's the only reason I was I was also pointing out that maybe the DP could have gone for Hood is I feel like a pipe is so necessary against this dire lineup. Yeah, yeah, maybe. It would definitely help a lot against like with Ursa and, and Wraith King, but just would be very mm -hmm. different. Like if they if they had better early game, then it would solve all those defensive problems anyways, because they would be jumping on their opponents and bursting them down quickly. They pop a smoke. They did not catch Wraith King. That's okay. He's got a Blink Dagger, so he can be the one that initiates now in fights. He's got almost three Skellies so any moment here. Can we press Getting o ready to pop him. Oh, it's still on oh. cooldown. We have to wait for sure. the cooldown, sure. too. That's all. He just uses cooldowns. Dark did TP back. Did he leave a Remnant? This could maybe be the fight to take since the Ember Spirit is not there. doesn't have travels. I'm not seeing a Remnant anywhere on the map. Shadow Demon will be tanking you the see game. see JMLV and, oh, that was not the four staff you wanted. An oh, Echo Slam, echo. though, it connects on three. The Greaves are popped. It looks like he will be able to survive, and bad news for the Radiant Dark has arrived. He throws down three spirits, and it connects on everyone. The respawn here from Chow Mains. We do have the Exorcism popped by Ultra Gunner, but on the second life, it doesn't look like he's going to be able to do anything, as now the BKB already used there by the, the Ember Spirit. There is a double kill for Ultra Gunner, but can he man up against these dire heroes? He almost gets the kill. Oh, okay. Looks like we have a disconnect, but... That's a rage quit for sure. I think the dire team is <laughs> giving up. To, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's, there's no chance. A lot of damage output there. Trying to get the, the nice Tarker kill, but that Solar Crest was just too much. Normally, I feel like uh, Death Prophet would be able to survive in that kind of circumstance, but when your armor is reduced by 12 there... Cost just a little bit too much. You expected. Uh, it's a full five-man wipe for the Radiant. That is that is so bad. And a problem there, you know, the Ember Spirit wasn't there, so I feel like it could have been a good team fight, especially since he hadn't put down a remnant. Mm -hmm. But with these four staffs and you know the greaves that they have, like they had the double four staff on the Veno to bail him out too, even though the second one was a little weird. Yeah. It gave him time to just run from the mid tier two all the way to that team fight and just join the fray. Double raindrop here for the Shadow Demon. He's planning for for the future, I guess. <laughs> it's it's actually kind of incredible that. Will be buying raindrops. 
he just plans to, to, to burn through them slowly, I guess. Slowly to rockets. Why not, I guess? <laughs> Excuse me. That'd be uh, my plan, at least. If once I see that double raindrop, I'm like, I'm rocketing you nine times globally. That's my plan. To have fun in the game, you know? Just burn him. Exactly. Yeah, now they're 17k behind, though. So, you know, the timing isn't the same as last game, but it looks like they found themselves in a very similar situation. Uh, th that fight was better, though. Um, they oh, did... wait, wait. Four. Four skeletons. Four? Oh, good. Improvement. Just needs to let it get all the way to eight. Can they get the kill here on this Venomancer? He is running up for this bounty rune. He's actually going to get the bounty rune, and now Sharingan is the one in trouble. Four staffs away. It's not going to be enough, but the hookshot maybe saves his life. He's going to start teleporting away, and he actually He's makes dead. it out. Never mind. Spirit Vessel. Just dies in the fountain. Yeah, Spirit Vessel preventing healing, so... Good for them. <laughs> the pigs come out. He, I mean, his escape was good. I thought he was going to be even easier to kill in that, mo in that moment, but... Well, this will turn into a push. Damn, Night Stalker is fat, dude. He's got a Vlad's and an AC and a Solar Crest. Ooh. He's got freaking 40, 52 armor. It's insane. <laughs> He's got more net worth than the Wraith King, so this is really not a good situation to be in. And this is finally a lane of racks for the Dire. They don't hit buildings very well, but when you've got this many items, I mean, there's a completed Mjolnir now on Ember Spirit, so... Yeah, the, the AC is going to make all the difference for the Yeah, the AC the Mjolnir, pushing. a lot more attack speed. Plus, uh, they, the minus armor, right, on the buildings? Yep, that'll be really big, actually. And now, they will go through shrines, one by one. Also, uh, 25 attack speed to allies, that's actually a huge amount, in terms of hitting buildings. What else is flying out? Another raindrop? No, just observe rewards. <laughs> stack, uh, stack another set, why not? You can always have more. That's why they. That's why God made uh, three backpack slots, right? Yeah, I'm seeing an empty slot there that's not filled with raindrops, exactly. and that smoke seems kind of useless too, honestly. Exactly. Why not nine raindrops? Now I'm starting to. I mean, I really, I'm really struggling to see the wind condition for the radiant. It just feels like a delayed loss right now, more than anything. Yeah, it's. I mean, there's what's what's the item they're waiting for? They've almost got shivas, but other than that, like they're not even close to stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's looking real. I mean, Blackout, he uses the Glimmer, still gets caught there by the, the Gale, and now the, yeah, it just gets vesseled up in another slide of fist. Chow Mains blinks in on this Wraith King, but the defensive disruption is there. There is a hook shot. It connects on to two. Now the Cog's going to push JMLV back. The BKB is popped here by Aug, but he's not able to kill anything. In fact, they lose the, the clockwork, and he immediately buys back. They're holding down this oh the big echo slam in from illidan they're gonna be able to bring down aug and he has no buyback a triple kill now for dark they bring down the first life of this wraith king but gg is called did they even kill this ember spirit in the entire series i don't 21 no. 0 and 12 that's damn dude holy shit that you weren't you weren't wrong about impressive. Didn't you say? Didn't you say Dark was the best mid in the league at the moment? Yeah, I, I would. I it, it's you know it's he's probably the best mid in the league right now after that performance. Uh, that was, yeah, that was he played really really well. Honestly, it looked like a very very solid player. Um, still pretty good series. Um, Ultra Gunner trying to hold his team together and uh, make things work, but it didn't quite materialize fully. And I, I think the the thing that they are definitely missing uh, in terms of Dota strategy is they 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 aren't good at winning their lanes like they don't understand the maybe they understand but they're having trouble executing it but they need to work out abusing their heroes in the first couple levels basically when they do have strengths and they need to turn that into like lane dominance because uh in both games that was an issue for them um in both the off lane especially this game in the off lane and the safe lane lane dominance was something they never achieved and then it's hard to turn that into a mid game when you're losing both games from the start so yeah, oh. I, I definitely agree with you. Another thing I just can't get past is is in the draft, if you give one of the best mid laners in the league a comfort hero in both games, I think you've fucked up. Because in the first game, he got the Queen of Pain, completely went off. Second game gets the Ember Spirit, same exact thing. And, uh, you know, it, it's a big issue in terms of tempo in the game. If the mid laner is just having the time of his life, it's going to start affecting all the other lanes. Like he rotated bottom, gets a double kill. We saw the same thing in game one. And now your now your bottom lane is, you know, screwed and 
Yeah. Especially when, when it's the second death for, for your safe laner and maybe 30 seconds he respawns to die. And, you know, it was just the same story, I think. They definitely held it together better on Ultra Gunner's team in game two, but... I, I think a lot of this was the dark show, honestly. Games one and two. It was, yeah. Um, but I, I think the the stuff you're talking about draft wise, like trying to ban his best heroes, it's uh, probably not a terrible strategy because when you do have varied MMR stacks, it's I mean it's not that different than party MMR games in a way. Mm-hmm. Like preventing the best player from having a crazy good snowball hero, I think that's definitely a good thing to aim for. Um, but it, it, you know, it's a it's a it's a team game. Um. If, if there's heroes that your teammates really hate laning against, or if those heroes hard counter the heroes they like playing, I could see reasons to... You can't you can't just ban, like, six of their mid-heroes, heroes, yeah. you know? like. <laughs> but I, I definitely think it's worth committing three bans to his three best heroes that you know if one of them is left, he's going to pick it. Like, last time, you know, I said the Queen of Pain's available. He's probably going to pick it. He takes it. This time, they let the Ember through. They ban the troll instead. It's like, I feel like they misjudged where the issue lied in the loss and they kind of just fell into the same the same trap for game two and uh, it was definitely a problem with with that said though he is 21 and 0 and 12 but again i, I still <laughs> yeah. think it was laning and stuff like the the wraith yeah, king yeah, no, had no, uh, under yeah. had less farm than he should have and the earth had less farm than he should have as well and less damage output the earth did the least damage on the whole team which is a little bit surprising to me um maybe that's just because like macro pyres they would stand in rockets and stuff i don't know but um yeah, a little yeah, bit definitely. of a rough game for them, but it was a little bit closer than the first one. So congrats to the, I'll say it one time, Poon Stars. <laughs> Incredible name. Uh, and that is going to be the, uh, they're going to be the winners of the Reddit Dota 2 League Season 16. Is that what you said? Yep, yep. Season 16, already 2 well. EST Sunday, finally taking it. I didn't, haven't seen them win yet, so that's, that's pretty that, big for them. That's the first time that the... No, no, no. I don't think it's the first time they've ever won it, but it's the first time they've won it since I've been here. So Jeez. Yeah, okay. I, I've seen them. I've seen them since some crushing losses, unfortunately, in the grand finals. But they finally take one. So congratulations to them, and a good effort, I think, by Ultra Gunner. Game two, they did they did a much better job, but they just they just weren't able to execute, like you said, in the laning phase, and it just snowballed from there. Yep. So that is going to conclude the tournament. Um, if people want to play in RD two L, uh, do you want to go through those uh, pitches again? So uh, if people yeah. want to play, they can. Yeah, absolutely. So if you liked what you saw you want to join rd2l get into a bit more of a competitive environment than your typical pub experience be sure to head over to rd2l.gg to sign up signups close on wednesday at midnight you still have three days to get in there we could always use some more captains you can also just sign up as a player i'm not sure where the cutoff currently is obviously we can't have you know teams that aren't five players you know including the captain but you know head over there go to the go to the the subreddit reddit dota 2 league and come join the discord get more information again we are uh we are a player draft league so you know we're gonna have the captains and then on draft day which i believe is next sunday they're gonna all come in there it's usually streamed it's pretty fun experience seeing people get picked up and you know reactions to certain certain teams people try to pick their you know players that they want there's a lot of scouting going on overall it's it's a fun experience and if you're wondering about the time committal it's eight weeks bo2 group stage typically about five weeks in the uh, playoff stage and then we have what we had here the grand finals so you know if it seems like something you'd want to do you know maybe you're you're at that point where you want to you want to get into something a little bit more more competitive that's still not super serious not going to be super stressful uh, go ahead and, and join rd2l like i said we we have different divisions play on different days different times est sunday est monday both at 9 p.m eastern and then we have pst as well 7 p.m Uh, pst so 10 eastern so whatever time works best for you whatever day it's not super hard to plan and i think it's a pretty pretty fun league well it's definitely fun to watch and uh, it sounds like it'd be fun to play if it fit my schedule it does not unfortunately (laughs) so i got a pass but if you guys are interested definitely sign up all right uh thanks again subject for casting with me i appreciate it do you uh yeah your twitter is subject dota is that correct yeah my twitter subject dota cool go give him a follow casting solid carried me well thank you appreciate it (laughs) um and we will see you guys uh next time i guess see you in a couple months uh season 17 finals yep come join season 17 all right thank you yep thanks a lot have a good night bye all right bye